Oh, sorry, I'm running a bit late. Um, yeah, time just caught up with me a little bit, I'm afraid. But I'm here now. Oh, this should be an interesting stream. Um, let me just double check. Uh, let me know if my audio levels are good. Just check my tea is good. It's very hot actually. Straight out. Bear with me a sec. You need to eat it quick because otherwise it's cool. It's already been out for a while. How is everyone? Oh, thank you, Laurie. Uh, Laurie says the audio is good, which is excellent. Hope everyone's in good fettle today, or in fine fettle, as they would say. Um, I've had a heck of a few days. Um, I spent most of today rebuilding the um, the uh, 176 ball. It's actually a 200 ball uh, STM 32F7 part. I'm rearranging it and mm, checking pins and stuff. I'm relaying it out. Uh, so that's been a lot of fun. Very intense. And I'm in the middle of uh, the uh, the rerouting of the uh, Ice Logic board. Um, I made some significant changes. So much so that I literally, uh, I virtually start from the beginning. Um, in order to make it when it needs to be and I'll go through those changes because I think you'll be um, interested plus I also need um, some feedback on some choices that we've got now yeah. and it carries on from uh, where we left off just make sure that's all wiggly it carries on from where we left off in the last few streams really um, and in particular, dealing with the um, the retro deck and a few other things around that. I think sometimes what you need when you've got several things going on, or what you look for, is. Um, not only for the good ideas to settle in through a, you know, um, a nice concert, if you like, but also um, you need things to kind of come together to converge, really. Um, I may have mentioned last week I was working on the replacement for black ice at the same time and that has a lot to do with um, what we're going to talk about today oh it tastes good right so I guess we should uh, crack on so let me lay out where I was at the back part of last week after the last stream um, <laughs> let me bring up actually the pad because this is going to be useful for us to be able to see what's going on
So this is where we were um, at the back end of last week. And it's from this that we're building. So if you remember what we were talking about, um, just a reminder where we were versus where we're going. Uh, let me show you. So this is the board shape, right? The bat, as I post calls it. Um, so given this shape, uh, what we were figuring was that over this, over here, which is the mezzanine board plus here, which is the uh, the kind of additional tile slash mez. So the, a mez board would fill this entire area for um, for the retro um, system. And then if you wanted to operate in a uh, non-retro situation where you wanted to use the hyper RAM, then what would happen is this, this would have uh, a hyper RAM overlay and then you could potentially use this as a tile. However, the more, the more you look into how you do that with the particular lines, etc the deeper it gets and the more difficult it gets to resolve. Um, in particular, the hyper RAM, we've chosen very specific pins. Uh, and I've had lengthy discussions with TNT about this in order to get the pins optimized for the hyper flash. Because the way that the hyper flash bus works is it's very sensitive to timing and things. And in order to get a decent response, um, on something like the ICE 40, which has limited capability, you need to optimize for the pins that are available. Uh, and uh, Sylvan TNT has a really good insight into the ICE 40 and the IO architecture and the blocks around the IO architecture. And he, he, he can really look at the best way of optimizing how that works. So we've already chosen the pins. So we have this kind of constraint on some of the pins that means they're kind of mountain immovable, if you like. We can't, can't mess with those. That in turn gives us another problem because when we have this board like this where we have the mezzanine at this side and then the extra tile this side and we want pins from both sides, they're split either side of the FPGA in a way that makes it inconvenient to use both of them or exchange the use of them. Uh, and further, if we look at the diagram um, on the left here that we drew last week, uh, hopefully we should see some red marks here. One of the things, one of the key areas we, we had some issues with, um, among other things, I wonder if it just has a pointing mode. Mm -hmm. Just realise it probably doesn't have a pointing mode. So I end up accidentally drawing otherwise. Interesting. I must get onto the forum and uh, suggest uh, a non drawing pen just as a pointer. Anyhow, you can see the red mark. I get close but don't touch. So uh, one of the things to concentrate here is this data bus here. So when the ICE 40, in the retro configuration if you like, or in the educational configuration, running soft core here, this is the master and it's writing out the data bus to all of these peripherals, the flash, PS RAM, and they're all parallel, the 16-bit parallel. And then there's the address bus as well, etc. that goes up here to that. And we've also got the tricky chip selection. I'll come back to those in a minute because that's a, another issue that we have to deal with. But here, the data bus, um, because of the way that this is structured, I can't use the same pins for this data bus here to the STM32 um, as the hyper bus. 
because that will impede the performance, for one. Secondly, it means I can't use this connectivity between the IS-40 and the STM32 when we switch into the hyperflash mode using hyperflash memory rather than the, you know, the parallel flash and PS RAM. So there is literally a whole bunch of constraints that mean getting all these pins right is really tricky and they're not necessarily in the place that you want them. Um, so that was one of the big problems I had. The second problem we had, uh, and I'll come back to this, is we need to be able to program the IS-40. So we're using the SPI pins here from the STM32. But because of the number of pins we need in this arrangement, um, we are compromising these SPI pins. We're giving them dual purpose because they are being used as the chip select pins, which we need as part of the uh, uh, selection scheme here. Um, that causes another problem. I mean, there are we did kind of think of a, a way around this or an improvisation, but it was not particularly satisfactory. And we also lose the async communication between the STM32 and the IS-40. So it was all less than satisfactory. And I thought, well, let's, let's think about this a bit more carefully. Are the ways of improving that? So that was one of my objectives. Now, in parallel, um, I'm coming to the end of the Black Ice uh, MX boards and I can't make any more because I can't supply the parts. I can neither supply the microcontroller that was used and I also can't, sorry, can't source the microcontroller that we used and I can't source the uh, uh, TQF144 4K uh, FPGA. In fact, I can't get any of those at the moment. So, um, it's not possible um, to carry on with the Black Ice MX in its current configuration. And I've known this for some time. So I've been working on what I do for the Black Ice next. Um, so one of the things I thought is, can these be converged in some way? So the current Black Ice MX as is, um, was designed using Black Edge. Now, if you remember, Black Edge was the technology where you separated the core board, which is why you had the ice core. Uh, let me just remind you, get some props here, just in case that you've forgotten. And for anyone that doesn't uh, necessarily, or hasn't necessarily see, seen this or is familiar with the history. So Black Ice MX came in two parts. This this is the uh, the ice core board, which is a small board with all the the brains on it, if you like, with all the clever bits on it. And then on the back of that, you've got these black edge connectors, which is a pair of 50 pin connectors. That in turn fits onto the black edge MX carrier, which you can see here. Let me focus this. And that, it kind of goes on like that. I'm not gonna actually fit this one in because I need to keep this separate because I've got to do some work with this one. There's a damaged one. Hold on. Interesting. So it kind of goes like that. Yeah. And this has P mods of which uh, this one's a good one, this one's a good one, this one is compromised because it uses shared pins. And that, so that was built on Black Edge technology. The Black Edge is the interface between these two. Okay, so that, that's how it worked before. Um, and by the way, I can't get, cannot supply these, cannot source them, I cannot supply uh, these microcontrollers either, cannot source them. I also have trouble getting the uh, memory. 
so it's just hopeless really. I've been trying for some time. So I knew I was going to have to make some radical changes. So <clears throat> I was thinking what would a new version of Black Eyes look like given everything else that we're working on and can we converge those two? And that's what I spent quite a bit of the weekend working on. And could I solve both of these problems at once? So here's my thinking, here's the plan, subject to change. In order, you know, in order to build the Black Ice MX, which is the current product that we're going to run out of very shortly, in the next month or two, maybe sooner, um, that was designed and built and tested around Black Edge technology. Now, what I've been working on in the background here is how do I do have a black ice that's built on the technology that we already have in in terms of you know the ice logic board or ice logic bench or you could think of it as ice logic bus there are lots of ways of seeing it And I wondered what that would look like. And I figured that ideally the black eyes should inherit some of those new capabilities. So wouldn't it be nice if it could support tiles, but also given the market that it's in and its historical precedent, it's always supported PMODs. So out of the box, it must support PMODs. If it can additionally support uh, tiles, um, then I think we've got a good solution. Also, um, wouldn't it be nice, you know, when I'm looking at that diagram on, on the right, that diagram to me is ideal for black eyes. That's that's smack bang in the black ice market because lots of people buy the black ice and want to be able to do soft core work as well as p mods and things like that as well um, and when i think back to what we have with black ice 2 um, one of the advantages that many people felt that that had over the black ice mx was a better memory arrangement when it came to doing things like retro which a lot of people have bought black ices for, but also learning the FPGA as well. Because it's obviously very popular in educational markets. I've sold more boards into education than to anywhere else entirely. Um, you know, I've had universities and things buy large quantities of these so that they can, you know, teach FPGAs at relatively low cost. So, that diagram there on the right, I thought, well, that kind of looks a lot like what I'd like black ice to be. However, what's on the far left of that isn't quite right. So as this is at the moment, this is generic. And these are just four, four tiles, right, in this model. And really, you don't want four tiles if you're doing black ice. You need something more educational. Um, most of my recent sales, nearly all of them have gone with uh, seven segments, for example. That is the most popular PMOT by, by, you know, a mile. Um, because it's a good educational part when people are learning about FPGAs. Most people are buying the black eyes for educational purposes. I don't mean educational establishments necessarily, although we've sold a lot to it, educational establishments. What I'm talking about is people teaching themselves FPGA, software engineers, electronics engineers, you name it. They, they, they come from all sorts of different backgrounds and want to learn FPGAs, and they tend to go for black eyes. Um, having lots of connectivity is good so can we do it in a way where we maintain what 
the ice logic bench is but yet use it for development for the black ice okay so here is my solution first off I'll come back to the diagram in a minute let me just show you physically where we're going with this right on here if you look at this right this isn't optimized for black ice for two reasons one it's too big it's also very expensive because of its size compared to black ice secondly we are relying on having effectively four plus one tiles which we don't need in the black ice situation that's just overkill um, not only that the default situation should be a good educational one so what I'm thinking is what we do is you cut out this hold on let me get in the right angle here cut out the central part here and then you squeeze the two four by two double tiles in together so if you can imagine that middle middle bits missing you then end up end up with a board rather than being 150 mil wide you end up with a board being 100 mil wide and then you stretch it slightly vertically because at the moment it's about 88 mil height wise so you change that so that it's 100 mil so you stretch it a bit further so what you then have is an optimized size of 100 by 100 mil which is economical from a PCB manufacturing point of view much more economical than this beast and you have four tiles so you don't have the center one but that's not a problem for black ice because you're using all these pins up anyhow on a mezzanine in the black ice configuration yeah so on the new ice logic bench that will be used to build uh, black ice mx and any future decks I lose the center part we only have four tiles and then all the other all the, all the extra IOs that are left come up through a very narrow mezzanine which is the difference between the height of this and the new height and that's wide enough to fit things like hyper flash on it and you know uh, like an FPC camera connector or date or a uh, parallel data connector or a combination of maybe you know a, a, a data uh, sorry a LCD and a uh, camera so uh, that's what I've been working on and I already have the layout I can't show you it's actually on my other machine it's not completely rooted yet as I say I've been messing around with it trying to get everything to fit but I think it's going to work basically so that is the plan physically um, so if you can imagine that being four tiles without the center bit that will be the base the new base that we're going to work with rather than this one and it's also going to be used to construct the new black ice board now what will come with the new black ice board will be this base board but with four tiles rather than five and then there will be a couple of boards mounted there will be the educational part of the board which basically exercises what you see over there but I'm going to draw some more bits on that because we need a bit more and the way that that fits together is such that the default board that you get with it, the default board, isn't four tiles. It's actually two tiles, but they're both double tiles. I'll explain why in a sec, but I'm changing the dimensions of these slightly because what happens is with the new version of this, you can perfectly fit the seven segment display underneath let me get that in so that you can see what I mean 
use one that's not quite so bulky. Bear with me. Take this and imagine that's your tile, but it's only four, so you've got a bit middle bit missing. You turn it around and you've got a tile that fits on there, and on that tile is this, and that fits perfectly in this joint because what I've done is I've made it slightly deeper so that it does fit perfectly on the tile. So that's mounted on the tile that then sits on here, but it's actually a double tile, so something on there. So there's that on this side, and then on that side is a VGA. Um, you know, like that. On that side you've got a VGA. Then on the bottom you have a mix mod, which is a double P mod with analog in between, so it's backwards compatible with the mix mod, which I want for the uh, uh, black eyes. And then on here you've got a single P mod, um, and you've got some extra signals that are left over. Um, and that will form the new uh, black ice. And what's more, so that, so let's draw what that will contain using this diagram before. Um, this diagram. So let me just draw that. So these tiles, even though the four tile connectors are there, what you actually get is you get a seven seg. Ooh. That's weird. What you get is a seven seg a VGA. These share an 8-bit bus. Um, which is switched by... Uh, a buffer, in fact. Come on. I've got some weirdness going on with this. It's not letting me, letting me um, select. Okay, right. So there's a buffer here, and then there's a, a bus into the top. And there's some shared pins. 
eight of the pins are shared and there's actually a um, remember I said over here I've got this decoder that comes in two parts as a spare one so the decoder over here enables you know the various segments and also enables this buffer or not so we get a better use of pins so basically all of this adds up to about 12 pins rather than um, more so we can serve some pins so that's on the board um, secondly uh, so that's on the top board so remember I said there's a seven segment on the one side and then there's a VGA on the other um, and that's like a double tile then what we do is we take some of the pins that are left over and we use them to do things like our chip select over here so I don't need to do this anymore so I've now got a separated spy and chip select CS oh C X and that C X comes out of um, uh, effectively the leftovers here C X um, it also goes to the um, STM because the STM needs to see those so um, yeah this is really rather god this is gross let me do a better job I just looked at this if we can draw that a bit better the trick is to do do these first Um, that could possibly be four as well but I'll come back to that at the moment the ones I've got in stock are only three digits um, then on the bottom half we have MX1 which is the mix mod one and we have a separate P mod by itself which is uh, 8 pins this is 16 plus analog 5 analog because it's mix signal And that comes out of uh, these two, basically. Now, this isn't correctly showing which pins are connected to which, but <laughs> Laurie says, I missed a bit and <laughs> I'm a bit confused. <laughs> Okay, um, right, let me just do a refresh, stop me, um, if you're confused. This is the ILB as of last week. We're going to get rid of what's in the middle here. We're not going to have an extra fifth tile and a 
wide mezzanine. We're just going to have four tiles, then we're going to increase the height and then have a narrow mezzanine in between the two. Okay, it will be 100 by 100, whereas this is 88 by 150. It will use a lot less PCB, a lot more economical and easier to make. On there, because these two tiles here are now together next to each other, I can make a double tile that covers them both. Likewise, on the bottom, I can make a double tile that covers these both. So I'm making a double tile that covers the top, and on that double tile is a seven segment LED and I can't find it and a VGA which is what you can see there that I've just added in and then on the bottom double tile you've got uh, a mix mod and a single or a double P mod if you like so you've got 16 digital and 8 because um, you've got 24 hours to use plus you've got the analog and the mix mod and yes the the mezzanine runs horizontally in the middle between the tiles but it's only 100 long not 150 like this because obviously we're losing 50% Sorry, we're losing a third yeah, of the width. And that forms the new uh, black ice. Are you, are you with me now, Laurie, do you think? Do you want me to explain any of the particulars? Uh, ILB is still the baseboard, the carrier. Just in the same way, sorry, yeah. It's the opposite of what Black Ice, Black Ice MX was the combination of the Black Ice carrier and the Ice Core uh, core. Black Ice, mm -mm -mm, and we'll talk about that in a minute, will consist of an ILB, which is shorter, with only four tiles, and a narrow mezzanine, and two daughter boards plugged into two double tiles. And the two double tiles provide um, the, actually, yeah, I'm, I'm missing an important bit. It's not two double tiles. The top tile isn't just a double tile. It also includes the mezzanine because it also has the memory on it. Okay. So the one with the seven segment and the VGA also has uh, the flash and the PS RAM on it. Okay, these. But the bottom tile is just simply, you know, uh, the mix mod and P mod. 24 IOs plus the analog and that the whole thing together that is black ice mm -hmm, the new new name black ice so black ice is a ILB product sold with fixed double tiles in this case including the mezzanine and what's on those tiles well everything on that diagram yeah the memory addressably the parallel addressable uh, flash PS RAM the STM32 that's also on the uh, address bus data bus rather the seven segment display the uh, VGA and then on the bottom, you've got the uh, mix mod, which is, you know, 16 digital IOs, except two lots of double P mods and a single P mod. So 
So the ILB now has the STM32 and the ICE40 under where the mezzanine goes. That's correct. Spot on. Yes. And they go uh, across in between the two sets of tiles, the upper tiles and the lower tiles. I'm afraid it's on the other machine. I can't, can't show you the layout at the moment. But I will do probably on Friday. And hopefully by Friday I will have finished routing it. Been messing about with it. Are you with me now, Lloyd? Are you caught up? I probably didn't explain it very well first time round. So you are now calling the retro deck, retro deck black ice something. Basically, yes, but I don't know what that name should be. It should have black ice in it because people recognise it. Particularly in education and things, people look for black ice and it will re replace what's there now. Um, with all these improvements. I mean, we could call it, for our example, Black Ice Retro. Or we could call it Black Ice Deck. Or we could call it something else, like Black Ice 101. What does a 101 stand for? Well, it's obviously the Americanism is the learning, you know, thing, 101, educational aspect. But 101 is also five in binary. So it's like uh, the fifth board, board five, because the first boards didn't have a number. Um, what else could we call it? We could call it any number of different things. It needs to have black eyes in the title. So basically it's marketed as black eyes. It's aimed not just at retro, obviously, it's aimed at educational, which is pretty much where a lot of the black ice stuff goes anyhow. But the other thing to remember is you've still got an ILB there. So if you then take, you can then take the mix mod, P mod adapter off and you've got two tiles you can use on the bottom. You could even take the seven second VGA off the top. Then you've got four tiles available. However, if you took the top one off, you lose the uh, extra memory, the flash and PS RAM. I'm very open to ideas in terms of naming and stuff. As far as the black eyes people, go it will just be a new version of black ice that has all these funky features and it's a definite upgrade on my, uh, what black ice was before Um, in terms of the pin usage um, on the top, because I wanted to go into, I mean, are you with me in terms of how this goes together and the way I'm converging the two platforms? Why does a second double tile have a mix mod and a P mod? Right. Well, we come to that in a sec. Um, so the top one has to have. Uh, the top one for educational purposes has the seven segments. Most black ices I sell, I sell with seven segments anyhow. People always buy the seven segment P mod, barring very few, you know. That is when they're buying it off Tindy. Um, given that and the VGA, and the CS pins now for the P, PS RAM and flash to avoid using the SPI. I think we've still got a few left over. We have 24 pins, 
The uh, seventh seg and the VGA uses 12 between them. And the chip select pins uses two. Plus we, the other thing that you wanted as well was the masking ability. Upper byte, lower byte. Nori, can you remember when we had that conversation last week on the stream? So we can do that as well. So we use four of the pins. So that uses um, 16. And then we have a few spare. Then we have a few spare. So I might add in, I haven't drawn on that diagram, but what we should also add is um, audio. That only needs to take one or even two lines. So it's like an audio chat. And, and as I say, I wanted to support the masking as well, which we can do with the pins. We may have some left over for that, but I'll come back to the pin calculation in a sec. So um, the tops pretty much make sense, right? The 7th egg, the VGA, and the audio. That means we can do all of the standard uh, educational stuff around the soft core. We've got everything we need there. Um, and the STM32 is mapped in with the 16-bit data bus as well. So that can be accessed from the core. Which is all cool and nice, which we haven't had before. Now, um, the other thing that uh, we have is this bottom tile. So the bottom tile, I thought, oh, well, let's use PMODs. That was what I was thinking originally because Black Ice has already had PMODs. And I just thought shipping out of the box, it needs to support that. You can take it off and use them as tiles if you want, if you prefer to use tiles, but by default, it comes with PMODs, right? Um, because there's only 24 IOs on the bottom pair of tiles, you can't do two mix mods because you need 32 IOs for that. Um, so you have what you can do is you can do three double P mods or what I've done here which is a mix mod and a double P mod does that answer your question on the P mods I did actually have a design that had a quadruple board that had two mix mods on the bottom, but then you don't, the number of pins that requires means that you have to sacrifice things like the upper and lower bite masks and stuff. It was doable, but yeah, you lost some, what I think are quite, you know, I agree with you. Having that, those mask features, um, the upper and lower bite mask features are really handy in the, excuse me in a lot of areas yes so with the ios i've got left over and i need to do the calculation in a minute because i've forgotten the exact number we'll go through that i'll explain exactly how the numbers stack up in terms of io um i want to have a keyboard connector on them i spent quite a bit of time also in doing all of this I've been researching the keyboard stuff I've been looking at things like keyboard designs and stuff that we can use as well but um, what I want to have is at least a PS2 type connection um, one of the things one of the things that we can do potentially is there is a spare USB port on the STM32 that we could use as a USB host. Um, so if we were putting in like a, um, uh, a circuit Python firmware, 
which I want to do at some point, then they're starting to build in USB host as well. Um, there is some firmware written in C that does that using the STM32 house, the C house, the Ice Cube house. So it's certainly possible. It's not currently possible with, as far as I can make out, Rust. Um, although that may change. So that's one possibility. So you, you could then plug in a USB keyboard, the STM32 translator into PS2. However, in the short term, that's not, that's not available. It's a longer term goal. So I think we need to have like a PS2 um, capability. One of the things I was thinking of, rather than having this uh, extra P mod down here, we could put a uh, pair of, or, or we could put uh, maybe a, a, a PS2 connector or one of the um, nine pin, you know, like one of these, but a nine pin. And we could have a bunch of channels in it. So you could support more than one PS2 device. So you could have a PS2 mouse and a PS2 keyboard, or you could have two game controls. Um, so rather than having the P mod there, you could have that, or you could do a P mod that converts the P mod to that, possibly. That's not as nice. So that's one of the things that I wanted to talk about is, do we, you know, get rid of this extra P mod and put something else there that in this case is more useful. However, in a more generic case, it might not be as useful. So. Your thoughts on that would be appreciated. Feedback on that, because that's one possibility. There may be some pins left over. We'll have a look in a minute. After we've done the audio here, enough to do a PS2. The problem we have is how do we expose that? Um, and there's some quite interesting examples. So you see this jack here. Uh, we can run PS2 over those jacks if we want. So I could put a, more than one jack here, for example, and uh, have uh, PS2 run over it as well. If we've got the IOs left. So then you have a cable that just converts from a jack to a PS2 female or something. Or in the keyboard case, it goes directly to a jack into the keyboard. If you're using a split keyboard, you use two jacks, one into each side, which is really cool. I've also been looking at um, doing the keyboard with an FPGA, which is interesting. And I know I said last time, oh, no, I'm going to use my controller to do it. I found a really quite cool way of doing it with an FPGA that's much lower cost. So that would fit in with, you know, our designing your own computer system, our retro, our, our, our computer system that never was, but will be from the past. So we've got several options there, and I have been thinking about that. It's been, you know, at the forefront of my mind, along with solving these other issues. Uh, 
Um, have you seen the split keyboards that are popular? Let me see if I can find the link actually. Hold on. Um, whilst you're thinking about everything I've said. GoDaddy websites plus no, marketing. No, no, no. I don't want to see a video. <laughs> How annoying. No, I don't want YouTube. Let me find a picture. Um, this is a good example. Okay. Um, These are one of the ones I've been looking at, strangely. Let me bring the browser up so that we can see what's going on here. So on this keyboard, and I've been looking at very similar ones to these, I like these kind of more columnar split keyboards. The reason I like the split keyboards, I mean, I showed you what I've got, um, is ergonomically the better angle for where your arms and hands are. So it's much better. You're much less likely to have RSI problems. Now, if you look closely here, can you see what's going on? If you think about the problem that they have, they have to bring the USB in to the top here, and then they have to connect one side of the keyboard to the other, which is kind of bonkers, really. So, uh, and I don't know why you want two OLEDs on there, but anyhow, let's not go there. But underneath these are two micro microcontroller boards, like 80 megas or something, small, microcontrollers so this has two of them on which is ridiculous um, and then this jack between them and these jacks carry I think I squared C and data now what I'm what I'm proposing is you could just you could very easily carry both of these cables back to those two jacks because they are 3.5 inch jacks uh, I wonder if I can get a there we go so the other end of these two cables would be our deck, you know, our black ice deck. And instead of having these on here, you basically have uh, an FPGA on each, a really low cost one. That's if you want to go the whole custom um, keyboard room. Otherwise, you can go with a kind of USB type solution, or if you've got existing PS2 or whatever, you can do that. What do you think? Uh, and I've got designs for lots of these as well. They're done in keycap, by the way, most of them. And there's all sorts of variations. All very interesting, says Dory. Anyhow, so we can solve the keyboard problem. There's a number of ways we can do it. The way I personally do it is this. Um, with two jacks, and the jacks just go back to the, the main board. The reason that I'd use jacks, by the way, Laurie, is because the height of jacks mean that when you put the... Um, you know your your tile on here the gap between them is big enough to fit the jack because they're relatively low profile 
whereas you couldn't fit in like a PS2 connector or one of those DB9s. But two 3.5 inch jacks on the side of that uh, top board wouldn't be a problem, basically. And in fact, what you could do is you could just buy one of these keyboards and just modify the firmware slightly and talk to them directly using those jacks without having to use the USB. Then you'd be able to use this for your normal keyboard as well if you so wished. Lots of options there. And we might possibly be able to do that without affecting the P-mod on the bottom. So let's just do that uh, fag packet math. Um, the way to think of it is you just bring this back up for a sec. So what we have on the new arrangement is, so for the top, dip double tile plus mez, we have 24 digital from the tiles, plus we have 38 digital from the mezzanine. That gives us um, 62, I think it is. Of which we need uh, for the VGA and 7 seg. So V. Uh, plus seven. We have, I think, uh, twelve. Oh, damn, it's all my writing today. And plus, we have, um, Minute. For the PS RAM, we have. Well, let's do it this way because this isn't going to fit. Break it down and read. PS RAM. Sorry, it's not PS RAM. Let's just say for the memory, which is both, we need uh, 38 for the data plus uh, two control signals, output enable, write enable, plus two for the chip selects, plus um, upper and lower byte two of those so that gives us 38 plus, plus 6 is 44 right I think we did that before so 62 oh wasn't it we need to write down our um, Seven seg plus VGA equals twelve plus audio. Right, we leave the audio out. Let's see how many we've got left. So we've got uh, forty-four plus twelve, which is fifty-four, fifty-six. So that's kind of fifty-six. 
62 minus 56 gives us six more pins. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll come back to that in a second, Laurie. So we've got six pins left to play for, okay? To do the audio and the PS2 with. Right, so the audio connector, the jacks that I'm using look like this. Uh, I think we've got this kind of affair going on. I think you've got like that, and that, and that. In other words, you've got ooh, you've got oh God, you know, four four lines. Um, so you can certainly do PS two over four lines. Because you could say, you know, that's ground. Hold on. So you could go something like, you know, ground, PCC, and then you've got, you know, data and clock. Yeah, and you could have two of these that would only use four IOs and then you still got two left for your audio so in other words if you had three jacks three of these jacks you'd be able to do audio and the keyboard stuff answer your question Laurie was asking doesn't the PS2 keyboard need four pins GDB VCC sorry ground VCC clock and data so yeah we can do that over these jacks because there's 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 four um, four pieces to the barrel of the these 3.5 inch jacks 3.5 mil jacks So in other words, we could have one audio and two PS2s, all using jacks. Because we've got enough pins left to do that. And then we could keep the P-Mod as P-Mods, is what I'm thinking. Because you might want to buy into ILB, but not buy into Black Ice, in which case you might want a P-Mod adapter. Right. as we have it here. What do you think? solution it solves all the problem we had at the end of last week as well by the way this isn't just about catering for the new black eyes but it's making an ILB better um, and being able to swap between you know this kind of memory arrangement and the hyperflash memory arrangement because in the hyperflash memory arrangement all you're doing is you're using you know a, a, a small narrow mezzanine card that has on it the hyperflash and maybe like a camera connector on it. And then you just use normal tiles. Or you could use one of these double tiles for the PMOTs, for example. The one bit of inflexibility is that you get VGA 
and seven segment, whether you want them or not. Well, that's true if you're buying black ice. But have you? Can you remember what the black ice page looks like? Let me show you. Hold on. I have thought of this as well. So um, let me go to. So if you look at black ice now, you may have forgotten this. Um, hold on. Have you noticed these menus? I can't remember when you bought yours. These might not have been there when you bought them. But when you buy black ice now, um, if you buy it as is, that's what you get. Or you can choose to add P mods. So, for example, you know, one of these breadboard combinations, or one of these, you know, prototype combinations, although you can't do that at the moment because I don't have any stock, or uh, the tester extender, which you're familiar with, um, you know, one of these. Again, they're quite popular. But by far the most popular, actually, is this one at the bottom. Most, you know, very large percentage ship with that. People choose that. So, on the new Black Ice MX, the default configuration could be including the seven segment and the memory, uh, you know, the memory map memory and the VGA and the PMOTs. But using these menus, you could probably replace uh, some of those things, depending on how flexible you want to be. So um, it's debatable. Do I need to have a sep separate page for um, the ICE logic board? I probably would have. Because sometimes you might just want to buy the ice logic board by itself. Um, and I wouldn't that wouldn't be available on here. So there'd be a separate page where you'd buy the ice logic board itself and then you have a choice, then you have a mezzanine choice, maybe. Although the default would be the hyperflash one. And then you have any number of different tiles that you can select to add in. Whereas this is pre-configured, you know, with the seven segment uh, VGA and the uh, um, traditional address data bus memory. And then maybe some options like and, and PMOD options selected by default, but you could always opt out of the PMOD part if you wanted or opt out of the top part but then you'd lose the memory so you'd need to have to even not need any memory or maybe have a way of choosing Hyperbus instead. All those options are possible. Does that kind of answer your question? You know you can build this as you want. I'd probably have a much more basic uh, ice logic board builder where you can build it from the ground up that isn't pre-organized in a way like black ice is for those that want to you know do that but also with the black ice you can i want to put the options there so if they want to buy another mezzanine as well with the hyperbus then they could do that so you know because some people honestly they just don't care they just go and they just choose everything that's available it's incredible because they want to be able to do everything you know and they they're not sure what they want so they just kind of get everything it's not many people but some people do so you want to provide as many options as possible so that people can get whatever they like basically 
It's just the pre-configuration on the black ice is done in a way that makes it, that fits the expectation of black ice. But there's nothing stopping, you know, stopping you adding and taking things away depending on options. Normally it's adding things in the black ice case, but there will be another page just for the ice logic bench where you can start from scratch. I.e. you choose, you know, the carrier and then you think, well, do I want this mezzanine? Or do I want that mezzanine? Or do I want this mezzanine and that mezzanine? Yeah, and then you can choose everything. Do I want this tile and that tile? Because don't forget, you may buy more than fits on the board because you might not use them all at once and then you can swap them in and out as you want. That's the way it works. You're not, you're not confined to doing it one way. There are ultimately a lot of choices. What the black eyes page will do is that will narrow the choices slightly because there's an expectation with people buying the black eyes because they kind of recognize uh, what black ice is. You know, it's kind of, it's got a, uh, it's got its own um, following and um, expectations, I think. Because the people that have already bought it tend to recommend it to other people. So it kind of comes with those expectations in many ways. And lots of people have used it educationally and then go on and think, well, I want one of those myself because I'm familiar with it, I guess. Hopefully that answers your question on that front, um, Laurie. You, you could therefore think of the new black ice as being something that's built on, designed and built on ice logic board and tiles or tile combinations. It's just a bit more integrated really. Hopefully that uh, gets us there. How are we doing for time? Gosh, it's nine o'clock already. Okay, so in, uh, the, into the finer print then, uh, Laurie. Oh, and everyone else for that matter. Um, let's also imagine the ILB now, which is now a four tile board for a narrow mezzanine. Let's think about the other configuration. So in the other configurations, well, yeah. So in the other configuration, you might have the hypervas mezzanine. Yeah, that may have. I'll probably put like a FPC camera connector on it, or a display connector, and then you can put whatever tiles you want with that. Um, as far as the configuration un under the board goes, this data bus is still there. Because of the way it's been designed so yes there is the SPI but not quad SPI that's still there so it can program the ice 40 so you can still do the excuse me you can still do the ice 40 soft core as a master except it's now talking hyperbus to the memory and it's got parallel access to the STM via the 16 bit bus yeah so it can still address it asynchronously okay like and I'll tell you where that's useful and it goes for the retro configuration as well 
in that because we've now got a high speed USB coming out here, you know, 418 megabit per second, which I'm hoping to get to work, that means we can bang up a whole bunch of data. You know, that USB gives us a kind of up to 16 megabyte per second bandwidth. It's actually significantly less than that because USB is not that efficient. So we could sh be shoving all sorts of data up here to the uh, USB host, which is useful for things like doing data analysis of what's going on here, logic analysis, uh, cycle accurate, you know, v VCC, uh, VDD, sorry, VCD data um, that could be dumped and graphed and drawn. Um, or you could insert data into the running system and the STM32 could be a master on the bus in here because you've now got a 16-bit data bus between the two effectively it's not memory map but it's pretty uh, pretty efficient pretty fast um, what you don't have actually is this there you've got SPI as well so you can run your UART over the SPI it's not a problem really easy to do that uh, where do you one minute, where would you have the mode button that's connected to the STM32 well that's a right angle button um, Laurie so that will be probably next to one of the USB connectors or something so you can just press it on the side um, yeah so you've always now got that 16-bit data bus that umbilical between the STM32 and IS40 which is really nice I really like that. You know, since we went down that retro path, this has come out as a benefit. You know, forget trying to use the QSPI, QSPI, if you like, in this case, we've got something much better here. And that remains even when we're not using the slow memory address map. So when you don't have that board that does the top and the mezzanine, you just use a regular hyper, hyper, hyper bus uh, memory then you've still got this data link between the two, which is really, really handy. Just wanted to point it out. I know we're looking at a diagram here based around the, the kind of soft core and retro, but not sure where you have the USB connectors. Um, they come out the side, actually. Um, so if we look at this um, don't forget you've got a bigger gap in between these two now for the mezzanine yeah so under the mezzanine you've got USB connectors coming out an SD card connector etc and the buttons and it may be both sides possibly and yeah, you, you will have a button on one side or tell a right angle button. So you may have multiple USBs, um, one of which could be a host, for example, if we wanted it to for a USB keyboard adaption. Um, You've also got the USB power delivery, which is why I'm talking about using both sides. I probably have power delivery on one side and all the other stuff on that side. I did toy with the idea of putting a USB A female host. They're a bit bulky.
and also the debug connector as well right angle debug connector that's there Uh, are you still planning to have SD RAM on the IL book? Yes, I am. It's a little bit annoying, a bit of a sore point. Um, the cheapest way to buy that SRAM is in a TSOP 54. Significantly less money buying it in a TSOP 54 package. But I have to buy the BGA package because there's just not room on the board for a you know, huge, great, big T-Sock package. Um, it's just not room for it. I mean, I've tried putting it on there, but it's it's, it's not really rootable. Um, to give you an idea, if you look at the ice core, that's a T-Sock 54. There, I've got my finger on. That one takes up a lot of room and makes it very difficult to root. So I'm, I'm going for a BGA one. But you have to pay through the nose for the BGA version of the particular chips that are compatible with the F7. Rather annoying. But yeah, it's going to come as standard. It will come as standard with black ice and well, it will come as standard on ILB. I did toy with the idea of making it optional, but there's just no room to put another, you know, board connector. And and you can't really take it up the mezzanine because there's just not room because it's narrow. The maximum number of pins that you can take up each side is 20, which gives you 40 total. And we need 38 for the data, uh, for the memory, etc. Plus you need, you know, ground and three volt three. So you can't do, even though you could, well, in fact, a TSOP uh, 54 doesn't actually fit on the mezzanine anyhow. Just too wide. What's the dimension of a a tile now the tiles haven't changed they're 50 by 44 um, the whole ILB is 100 by 100 millimeters so probably you know two-thirds of what that was but bigger than the current black ice obviously the tile size itself hasn't changed How deep is the mezzanine area? Do you mean how tall is it? So you've got length, which is 100, and its height, if you like, is a mere uh, 13.5 millimetres, if I remember correctly. Is that what you mean by how deep is the mezzanine area? The height is the same as the tiles. Off. If, if that's what you mean. By deep. And I'm using, looking at um, having eight megabytes of SD RAM attached to the F7. Which would be great when we want to run Circuit Python, because that uses a crap ton of uh, memory. Otherwise, it's no good. Too slow, and the memory would be a lot faster than the access that you get on something like, uh, um, you know, uh, ESP32 or something. Ooh. 
No eye post tonight. He must be busy. He's probably working. I think Weston was there earlier, but he's um. Period. Um, I was interested in the height of the mezzanine area as I wondered how you fit USB connectors a button and debug connector well they already fit underneath the tiles and the existing mezzanine Lauren. But it's already like that with the current one. Let me um, remind you of how svelte all of that is. Uh, so yeah, if you look there. Yeah, can you see the USB at the front? focusing properly yeah if I turn it up like that you'll see it all fits underneath the mezzanine when the mezzanine goes on top let me show you I'm doing here. We need more light. So, when the current mezzanine's on, so it's exactly the same as the current mezzanine uh, arrangement. Plenty of room. <laughs> totally confuse you. Picture of the layout will be good. Right. Bear with me a sec. Let me see if I can get onto uh, my system and remotely copy it across. Bear with me. Ooh, I may lose stuff. Hold your horses. Bear with me. I have to switch things around somewhat here to get this to work. There's a snapshot from earlier. Um, hold on. Right. I need to do a screen capture, won't it?
actually have all this. Um, I've just got to um, somehow copy this. From one machine to the other, bear with me. And I just um, copy this file over, so it needs to be um, right slash. T slash Hold on, I can't find the damn file I just saved now. Kind of bonkers. Pretty sure I just copied this over. Where has it gone? ILB. Hyphen BL. Well, that's very odd. Try and switch back now. Right, uh, this this is a snapshot I took earlier when I was working on it. So there's a whole load of crap on here. Um, but uh, I can't point to this because I've loaded it. Oh, shit. I need to load it using something else. 
that's annoying. Hold on. Hell door horses. Here's what we will do. Let me just open it up using a viewer. Uh, okay, and then I can add this in. Sharing this image. So strange. Right. For some reason that's not um, showing up. I don't understand. Let me try something else. Damn it. Open with other application. Okay, let's do it this way. Let's do it the hard way. God damn it. It's funny how some things don't work well with um, with OBS. Right. So you can now see my cursor, hopefully. So we've got four tiles. One, two, three, four. Two top ones, two bottom ones. In between the two um, is see this dotted line. Dot 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 dot. That's the bottom of those tiles, and then dot 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 here. In between those two, roughly speaking, this isn't exactly opposite because there've been some adjustments since then. This is the narrow strip of the mezzanine. In between those two lines. Yeah, so the mezzanine sits on top of here, as do the tiles. We're looking at it as if, in the same way we'd be looking at that. So the tiles sit on top of this, as does the mezzanine in between the two sets of tiles. Um, we've got all this space here in between underneath the mezzanine and tiles on this side and on this side can you see what I was doing trying a USB um, host a trouble is it impinges on the power supply part of the circuit 
um, and I also need to run power the high power through here and it gets in the way of that because this is actually a mid board USB connector and that um, that cuts into the board literally so I can't run the power underneath that so that that USB host thing isn't there this is the USB power delivery here this is the SD card here this is the mode button switch this is the high-speed USB 2 this is the debug connector yeah and all of that sits underneath in between the sandwich of the tile slash mezzanine level because the tile and mezzanine tops are flat yeah there's nothing on the tops of the tiles uh, I should also point out what's not obvious here on this uh, seven segment tile that is not flat because the seven segments on top but on the new tile that I'm talking about uh, this isn't here on the top it's on the bottom and it pokes through the hole at the back because this hole is slightly deeper now to allow the um, seven segment to peek through so when you're looking at the board the way that user looked for it you'd be looking at it from that side and you'd see the VGA connector uh, this is what you'd see. Hold on, let's see if I can. I mean, obviously, this is wider. You wouldn't have the bit in the middle. But you'd see something like. That. Forget the bits in the middle. You'd have seven segment and VGA. If you're looking at the underside of the tile view, sorry, the underside of the ILB, that's the normal view that you will see. So the tiles will be down on the on the um, table or facing my face in this configuration, the back of the tiles. You with me? Because it's slightly different. show you in this camera look. So this is the view that the user now rightfully sees this. So the gubbins are effectively hidden away underneath. And obviously you don't have this centre bit here. Because it's not there anymore. So these two tiles are adjacent. And you can't see the mezzanine because that's on the underneath. And the USB connectors will be, you know, in between the sandwich on the side here and possibly the other side. Is that making that a bit more clear? I know I've, I've kind of flipped it. I haven't kind of flipped it, but I was always going to flip it anyhow. It's just I hadn't done that with the seven segment board that we prototype that we did. will be easier of course uh, when I have the design stuff um, and if you look at the drawing here so you can see where I, be, I was playing about with well where would the FPC connector go so if we had a camera connector yeah if we had a camera connector this FPC connector would be literally um, on the mezzanine underneath here pointing that way along with the hyper flash etc remember the tiles are and the mezzanines inverted just the same way that the current mezzanine is inverted 
so that um, all the components including mezzanine connectors are all on the same side and then the other side is just flat the back I mean, obviously, it'd be long and narrow. It won't be square like this. Uh, what else can I tell you about this drawing? Um, you can see the mezzanine connectors here. Sorry, here. Those are wrong. Uh, those are 24 pins, and the mezzanine, the new mezzanine connectors are actually 20 pins. So they actually fit in to the width of the mezzanine, which is why we can only have 40 pins maximum. And two of those have to be, you know, ground and free bolt free, obviously. And forget all the shrapnel like this. That just hasn't been placed at this point. And this centre tile here, forget that. That's just the original mezzanine overlaying. So I've got the connectors here to estimate where they go. And, um, you know... Uh, the battery holder, there's no room for that. I'm going to go for something smaller. Um, in this example here, strangely, uh, let me just shrink this just a tad. In this example here, um, ignore these components here. You can see the size of that TSOC 54 here for the SD RAM memory. And that's just too massive. Where would that go? So this is the BGA equivalent. Sorry. This here is a TSOC 54. And this is its little BGA cousin. It's the same thing, but in a smaller package. It's also much more expensive. That fits in there to connect to the F7, which is here. No way of fitting that bugger in. Um, and the other thing I was experimenting with here is having a quad tile board that had two mix mods on. But then I don't have enough pins to do all the other nice stuff like um, upper and lower masks and stuff. But I was just imagining size wise because these are designed to be able to fit in, you know, a mezzanine. Uh, type uh, right angle connector any questions you want to ask about the ILB I mean it's slightly different this that this is quite close to um, how the final one's going to look to a degree there are some issues and here basically the tile connectors are on the far side of the board they're on the underside of the board from this perspective the red pads are the top and the uh, tile pads are on the bottom and that's different from the way it's configured in the current ILB so basically I've, I've torn the entire thing up and redone the layout which is why it's taking me so much longer uh, Laurie Griff says I like the fact that it's smaller so do I I really like that because it's there's a financial aspect to that as well. When I was getting costings, um, going that ex, you know, adding fifty percent to this size, you know, um, adds an awful lot of cost, and it does make it, you know, larger than it really needs to be. And this improves on that situation. You know, because basically it's only that big. OK. 
Coolio. No, I just got to refill the water. I'll be back in a sec. took longer than expected. I managed to get soap stuck to the bottom of this and it stuck to everything else. Now I'm just going to um, have some sugar whilst we're discussing this. I need a boost. Um, so the new black ice compared to the MX is larger. Yeah. I can tell you how much um, the old black ice was about 75 no oh. nearly 80 across and about 65 right so yeah Slightly larger. It comes with a VGA in seven segment standard. Yeah. It has a new 16 but PS RAM and flash. Yeah. The SD RAM has moved to the STM32 and is larger. Yep. It has fewer mixed mods and P mods. Yep. Although you could replace the mezzanine with a hyper flash and the top thing, and you have two lots of P mods, in which case you'd have two big. Three mix mods and two P mods. 
so it would be very similar to the um, original uh, to the current black eyes if you wanted to go that route um, has a 16-bit channel to the STM32 yep and the STM32 is more powerful yes and no I mean the current Black Ice MX uses an F7 but it's a smaller package it's a 64 pin we're now using a actually 175 plus 25 pin um, but we've got higher speed USB and a whole bunch of other things that weren't on the um, in the other package and we have a lot more memory of course it has more USB connectors as one never got used on the MX yeah it loses the HDMI connector that didn't work yeah don't forget that we're going to do a HDMI tire anyhow we could add that later I'm waiting for the big question, the obvious one. <laughs> he has a debug connector rather than a RPI type header. That's correct. But it has one of the, you know, ARM um, compatible 10 pin SWD, you know, 0.05 inch or 1.27 mil pitch. We have a visitor. One that makes meowy noises at the door. Hello, of course. Do you want to say hello to everyone? Is that why you've come in? Well, we're using the internet without a cat. Soon put that. Correct that when we talk, of course. Mm -hmm. Don't go pressing my keys or getting your fluff all over my desk. That wouldn't be good either. But very typical. Very typical. Mm -hmm. Are you going to sit down? Be friendly for a bit. Very good. Probably want to go out in a sec. Um, and it may have those free audio type connectors. Yeah. So again, I'd need to um, think about how those go on to the, the double tile, the black ice double tile. Um, if you look at this now, they'd be on the opposite side to this, in between the tile and the opposite side of this. Coming out of the side at the top here, or here. Probably I'd favor this side for audio and maybe this side for PS2 ones. Uh, the SD card is connected to the STM32 rather than the FPGA. That's correct, yes. Although we can always add uh, an SD card um, to um, I'll tell you what we could do uh, we, we could obviously do a separate tile of it, but what we could do is maybe add it to the PMOD board so you know where we've got the um, uh, on 
on the bottom double P mod, we've got a mix mod and a P mod, double P mod. With the double P mod, we could double up the connections for that double P mod to an SD card. So you could either use it as P mod, double P mod, or you could use it as an SD card, but not both. That would be a solution to that. Then you could use the beep stuff with that. Does that make sense? That solved that problem? It's a good point. Where are you going down, Twinks? Gonna go out. Figured as much, just a matter of time really, that's what you really came through here for. Wow, it's windy out there, Twinks. Do you want to go out there? <laughs> Turn around and came back in. God, how funny. It is very windy out there. I mean, we're down in the south, um, but yeah. In Scotland and the north right now, there are some serious wind issues. <laughs> They're on an amber warning. Amber weather warning, aren't they, Twinks? But you don't like it anyhow. It's really blowing out there big time. Hope it doesn't catch my um, parasol again. I have folded it up and put it away. Poor thing's pretty wrecked from having been caught in the wind more than once. Uh, Laurie says, yeah, that would solve the problem. So, uh, yeah, I can add an SD card. That's easy. I mean, the only issue with it is it would have to be probably side-loaded. So underneath here. Maybe. But, yeah. So you'd load it from the same side as this, effectively. Is there any problem that we can't solve? We're doing well here, Laurie. So now that you understand it and you've taken it in, is it a good change? I know I've moved things and changed things around. Remember I talked about convergence? So much better doing this than doing something completely separate for black ice. Because a lot less maintenance because they both have the same code base and stuff and you know they use some of the same components in this case the ILB we lose two buttons that the MX had they were useful um, I could add them on as right angle buttons along with the SD card on that PMOD tone because the P mod, the single P mod, oh, sorry, the double P mod has eight pins. Six will be used for the SD card, so there's two left, which we can put two right angle buttons on. And again, they won't affect things if, you know, if they're not used. You can still use the P mod, you just gotta remember not to press them if you're connecting something for the P mod. But that was the same with the existing P mods. Uh these existing buttons anyhow. What LEDs you have? I don't know on the LED front. We've got the RGB status LED, which is controlled by the STM thirty two, uh, that also shows the done status and all of that stuff. That bit hasn't changed. Um I mean the LEDs that we do already have on Black Ice, um, Black Ice, the new version. We have, actually, we've got um, uh, 24 LEDs, and they're arranged um, just like this. <laughs> Those are the LEDs that we have, and they're arranged in this strange fashion. There's 24 of them. <laughs> I 
That's probably not the answer you were looking for. I think we're out of pins now. I mean, we could put LEDs on the same pins as the button pins, which is exactly what we did, I think, on the uh, MX. And yes, you can use them for a simple blinky. Um, although it's slightly more complicated because you have to enable, you know, you can't just blink one line, you have to enable the segment before you can blink any of the individual LEDs. I mean, we could put uh, two LEDs on the same lines as the button compromises those connections a bit more for the P mod there because that's what we had on the MX wasn't it two of the LEDs were connected to the buttons same two lines right um, what are our other choices Oh, are you back again, Twinkles? You've gone quiet. What are you eating? Are you finishing your food? I'm not going to open the door again because you'll just look out there and go, no, I've changed my mind. Um, You're going to go back that way, are you? Back into the house. Okay. I was just thinking one other thing that we might be... We've got so many other pins used for other things. For things like... Uh, chip selection. Don't really want to double up on the chip selection. Because... That can cause problems. Are there any other? We have got the RGB LED. It's connected to done. It's connected to mode. And the fur bomb was going to be the possibility of a blinky. So where do we connect that to in the scheme of things? Do we have any pins that we could connect that to? Um, Okay. I mean, we could use the two button pins, I guess. Although using them for output and input does have issues. Um, we've got an LED, an RGB LED, with one of the LEDs not necessarily being driven. So the question is, where do we get the I.O. from to drive that, that we can drive just in a simple blinky sketch without it? messing with other things um, could we use uh, no I can't can't think of any other pin that we can free up not on the ILB so the ILB as is can't do a blinky it'd be nice if it could um, I'm 
tricky. Yeah, so I wonder if we could partially hijack one of the address pins or something. Something like that, maybe. Uh, one thing that we could do is we could use there's four SPI pins that go between the ice 40. and the STM32, if I remember correctly. I oh, need to double check the map. I think, I think that's the case. So we could have an LED on the CS pin. Or actually, we could have a LED on the um, serial out from the ICE-40. more than one LED so but yeah given that we've got a spare part of the RGB LED I could take that to or I, I could yeah I could just connect that to the um, serial out on the ice 40 it's not really used actually oh, I just bang that again Problem solved, yes, we can do that. Do you have UART pins from the STM to the OS40? No, we don't have UART pins between them, but as I said, we've got the um, SPI pins, so it's best to just do the uh, uh, UART over those. It's full duplex. Oh, yes, well. Um, if, if you're in a MicroPython environment, sorry, or CircuitPython, then yes, you can quite easily switch modes between um, the SPI and the UART. And I've overlapped um, RXTX with the clock and select pins. So it's possible. To enable one peripheral and disable the other. And yes, we could have LEDs. LED connected to one of those. The serial out, I think, is probably best. It would also flash when we're programming. Because the ICE 40 outputs anything it gets on its input delayed by a byte, I think it is. Uh, are you okay about the UART over SPI? I mean, it's, it's down to the software, basically. It's a bit tricky in Rust doing that, although it may well be possible with a little trickery. Um, the other way of doing it is you just literally, you know, if you're in the kind of circuit Python or micro Python, in the C code, you can easily flip between the two. Or honestly, just do a UART over SPI, it's faster anyhow. Probably uses slightly less resources. So you don't need to worry about ball rates and stuff. And it's simpler because it's full duplex. Simpler than QSPY, for example. Oh, you're wondering now, what is the time? Crikey, nearly at 10, nearly at a two hour mark. Yeah, I mean, basically we've got several ways of solving that. 
We could flip between the peripherals depending on what code's running. It's harder in Rust. C and Python, it's not hard at all. Um, or you can just run the UART over SPI anyhow. You know, you don't actually need a UART. You have something that looks like a UART from the uh, FPGA side, but actually it doesn't need board breaks and stuff. You're just sending bytes over the SPI and it actually requires slightly less in terms of resources. And because it's full duplex, because you've got, you know, it's a uh, master in, serial out, serial out, serial in, master in, out type arrangement. Wow, that wind is getting up outside. Crikey, I can't imagine what it's like in Scotland right now. I think we're going to hear of some incidents. The first of two this week, apparently. This is Dudley. I can't remember what the next one's called. Well, you're in, what, Manchester, so that is, yeah. It's going to be stronger up there. You're you're in the. Um, I don't think you're in the amber warning. I think you're in the yellow warning area. Whereas Southern Scotland's in the amber. I don't know how far. I, I think Newcastle may be in the uh, amber area. But I think you're probably, you know, in the yellow area rather than the amber warning area. But it will be damn windy. And as I say, it's the first of two this week. Eunice. Is the second one called Eunice? This one's called um, Dudley. Right. Okay, any other questions? Anything I haven't covered? Anything I haven't thought of? Um, contrast a bit better. And I'll tell you what, it's... Um, uh, the routing is quite challenging as well because now it's a smaller board i've also got a lot more pins with the 16-bit port from the stm32 to the fpga but i do hope to complete that by the end of the week and then after that i've just got to design those two small mezzanine boards those should be fairly simple though and the P-Mall board, the new version of that, but that's, again, that's trivial, really. I can knock those out really quick. Did not be ready to order some more. What I was thinking of doing for the, um, for the, for the uh, like a premiere run, I was thinking of maybe doing five boards, including one for myself. And make them available you'll be high on that list Laurie and then if I change the board I will replace them for you with the actual shipping ones I mean because there's a high likelihood of that of a slight refinement given the number of changes it's done it again it keeps moving because that cable slightly twisted, it pulls it round. Right, well, if that's it then, I think I might call it for this stream. Um, if no one else has any other questions or queries. Oh, I post tonight. He must be really busy.
As I said, I think Weston poked his head around earlier. Right. Well, let's call it quits then. Um, I'll see how I get on towards the end of the week. I might do another stream on Friday. Depends how far I get. Um, getting the new ILD routing done. Um, but I'll be down on Discord and stuff anyhow. I'll let you know what's happening on that. If you think of anything, folks, then uh, let me know on Discord. Right, so until Friday then, ciao, and thank you for joining me. <laughs>